Hey everyone, I have here the 2022 LEGO City Mobile Crane Set. This set comes with just the crane and two operators for it, plus one of these 8x16 road plates, not including any extra tiles to go with it to attach it to your existing city road system if you have any other sets from that series that, that use those new plates. Now, the color scheme for this is directly directly inspired by and based upon the mobile crane set that they did back in 1989, which is a very nice throwback, but the designer did not just attach themselves to that old design and try to remake that today. They really made something new and unique here in terms of all of the, the mechanisms and the build techniques, even though this is intended to be just a toy. It has a lot of technic mechanisms in it that kind of elevate it above the normal basic city set. I wanna get straight into demonstrating how this works. So I'm going to remove the hook from the, the little front hook, I don't know what you call that, the little loop there in the front, and turn this around as well, and then access these two knobs. It's very nice that they went with with a color scheme that kind of fits in here, so they're not screaming at you, turn this to make it work. You know, we, we, don't, we don't need all that. This one down here is to actuate a linear actuator with a gear drive on it, and then brings your boom up which is very nice. And then the second knob is just for the winch. So it's your hook up, hook down, line in, line out. Also, this does have an extending boom. So I need to give this plenty of extra line, show how far that is able to come out because it's pretty decent. Let's see. It doesn't really have a point where it tells you, okay, you can't go any farther than that right there. That is the absolute limit of it, but that's that's a pretty fair distance. And then in addition to that, you can rotate the entire deck around. Curiously, this does have a ratcheted turntable, not the, not the standard, you know, smooth moving one. And that means that once it's here, it's here. It doesn't want to, to flop around and there doesn't need to be any special mechanism to really hold that in place. So it feels more secure than usual. But there's one other thing you should do before you op start operating this, you should bring the outrigger, outriggers out. So there are two on either side, as you would expect. So those extend out and then turn them down as well. So off to a good start. The cab forward design is kind of a, kind of a classic, but still used very much today. And I, I think it looks pretty nice. Use just a couple of regular four wide car uh, roof pieces on top. And inside of there is just enough room for the two included figures to sit. The biggest problem, the single biggest problem with this that I've seen everybody talk about is the fact that there's a gap right here. So you can see that when you look through the cab, you can see the gap back here that really ought to be filled up. And I think there are ways to do it. Uh, if you just change up the, the detailing, I've got almost a suggestion of engine detail just behind there. I think that needs to be extended out a little uh, just a little bit. This does use stickers. So pretty much every decoration that you see on this is a sticker. Obviously you saw earlier that the hook would get held onto this. You got your side view mirrors here using the ingot pieces. This is actually something that will hold the boom in place to really make sure it doesn't go anywhere when that is down. Sorry about the focus there, but when it's down, I'll actually go right in there like that. So that is an effective way to hold this in place. The boom itself is actually a new color and the, the yellow color for this whole thing is not regular yellow, it's flame yellowish orange. And then if you go all the way out to here, they're using one of these cable management pieces, which works well. This is also the strongest form of cable I believe that they have. It's actually composite and it's strong, has a little bit of elasticity to it, but should definitely last a lot longer than older standard fiber. Like this is fully braided, uh, should last a lot longer than old basic fiber based strings. And then this is a nice setup here with the hook, with the, the weight around it. It's just plastic, not actual weight, but it does provide a little bit of weight to keep keep the string taut even when there's no load. And it also keeps the hook nice and centered right there. If you go all the way back here, you can see where the linear actuator, it's the smallest linear, linear actuator that they have. And that connects directly to the base of the actual molded boom piece, which itself is then extended back. They extend it back and then they use at the very back here, this dark gray piece, which is I believe new for 2022. 
could have been could have been brought out in late 2021, but I first saw it in the bat. Well, I, yeah, okay, I guess it was late 2021 that it first came out in the Batman movie, the latest Batman movie sets used for motorcycles. But another very good use of that, and just overall, you end up with a much longer boom than usual with very standard building techniques. Otherwise, nothing too bulky. You got plenty of string on the spool back here. And yeah, that's about it for, for the mechanisms. The, the deck down there you see has a, a, a lattice piece that's fairly wide and gives it a little extra texture without costing a lot extra, you know, not requiring a whole lot of extra pieces. And then over here is the operator's cabin for the, the crane itself, which has no sides to it. Keep, keeps it kind of narrow, you know, keeps it within the overall width of eight studs. So this is a wide load. It is difficult to get these to go around. Not impossible, but difficult to get these to go around on the, the new city streets. You would most likely want to widen them because they're designed for six wide vehicles. At most, that's it. I've got the other side of the tire lined up and there is only just enough room for this to technically slightly fit by there. It's inter again, it's interesting that they did not include any tiles for this. So it's just a basic load piece. It's not intended to really be a piece of, of road, I suppose. It's just supposed to be something that you use as cargo to transfer around. The, uh, the wheels are... Uh, just a regular blue color there as well. I thought that was going to be dark azure, but it's just a regular blue. Uh, overall, this thing does everything that I could personally ask it to do as just a regular city crane. And I didn't really have any problems with the build whatsoever, except at the very end there, just being unsatisfied with that gap that you're able to see. Very easy access to everything as well. But the gap definitely needs to be worked on if you want this to feel just a little bit more serious. Honestly, I would have expected the two figures to use the same torso here, so it's nice that they gave us a little bit of variety with the uh, high-vis stripes, the reflective stripes in there. Not the, not the thickest printing, not the brightest printing, but feels pretty appropriate when you just have this in person and when the light hits it right, then you get that nice extra shine. And yeah, you know, just a little bit of variety, I think, goes a long way. There's no alternate headgear piece for this one over here and no alternate face for either. Only a few leftover pieces and there's the sticker sheet. As I mentioned, quite a few stickers for the size of the set, I'd say. But I was pretty happy to apply most of them because they involve a lot of safety uh, hazard stripes and I like that kind of design on city stuff. Now I paid $40 for this for zero US and I feel like I got a decent value here. I honestly could have gone for $35 as an expectation. 30 probably is asking too little, but yeah, 40 felt reasonable for the amount of stuff, especially given just how good the stuff that is here is. Honestly, throughout the review process, I've been really holding back my feelings because I'm so heavily biased in favor of this thing. As soon as the initial pictures came out, I immediately just fell in love with the thing. Really, really fell in love with the thing. So I really tried to repress all of those feelings and just report on what I saw and go through the process normally. I hope I did a pretty decent job of that. Uh, there are actually a few things that I do want to point out additionally that I I believe I missed along the way. If I can get you in a little bit closer here. First of all, obviously this does have a trailer hitch on, on the back of it, but also right up here behind the cab. I forgot to point out that there are a couple of clips. You probably saw them, but there are a couple of clips to hold on to the minifig accessories. And those are for both of the minifigs included. Also, there's a space back here on the deck to hold on to this thing, whatever you specifically call that. But... You know, they thought of that as well. As a matter of fact, there's room for other things also. So all that is good. Also, <laughs> one additional good thing. Do you hear that? There's, there's a little click. Wait, here. That holds the outrigger in place so it's not falling out. But I will nitpick a little bit because when you pull this out, now there is no click. There's no click at the out point. There's only a click on the in point that will that will hold it, keep it from coming out. There's nothing to keep it from coming in. So when you have this on the ground, especially since the feet of this actually are not touching the ground, they're just maybe barely, barely scraping across the top of it. The outriggers are not physically doing anything here. They're not contributing from a physics perspective. They're not putting any weight to the ground. So that doesn't do a whole lot. And 
there's nothing to to keep these outriggers from being uh, just pushed in easily. So that is a, another small thing that's a little bit off. The last thing that I didn't like to nitpick on this a little bit extra, last thing I didn't like is back here, the spool is very easy to become untidy. Uh, the string can run all around if you just let it go. If you don't carefully guide it in, it'll run off to the side, run all the way over to the other side. And you see there's a stud right there with that, that uh, jumper piece. They easily could have put a clip right there or possibly a plate and then a clip to add just a little bit of extra tension under here and to help manage that line, help encourage the line to stay centered there. And that would have helped with that problem. Also putting out a couple of, of extra pieces to the sides here to, to prevent the, the line from wanting to walk too far would have gone a long way to help with that. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. Just again, you know, kind of nitpicking at things that could have been better here to make the play experience more universally enjoyable. But overall, super, super happy with this thing. Looking forward to hearing what you think about it. I need to try to keep this thing together in my life because I like it so much. It brings me so much personal joy, but I probably will not be able to avoid doing a little bit of modification to hopefully fix the, the gap in here, which is the only real, real problem with this. Maybe I'll do enough modifications to take care of the stuff back here as well, just so that I'm extra, extra happy with the thing, but I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep all of its original parts uh, for as long as I possibly can, even though it's not gonna go into my Lego city because my Lego city is supposed to be all custom stuff and I have purged all non-custom vehicles and figures already. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.